What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. Um, it's a little bit loud, so I'm going to turn off my flow hood for this video. Usually I have this operating 24-7, um, but these slants are at a pretty steep angle, and I'm pretty sure that they'll be fine um, through the length of this video. So today I wanted to kind of touch on um, the differences between different mushroom products to start your mushroom growing pro project. Ugh, that was a lot to say. So I get a lot of questions about what the best um, form of either mushroom spores or mushroom mycelium are and how you would start growing mushrooms. So I guess the easiest way would just be to buy a grow block so th this is one of our production blocks um, it's an enoki mushroom and it's probably you know a couple days out from going into the fruiting room now grow blocks are pretty easy um, it's already a substrate that has been sterilized by the producer like myself and it's completely covered with mycelium so it's ready to fruit mushrooms so you can think of mycelium as the roots of the mushrooms it's the whole organism but it kind of consumes the the substrate which is hardwood in this case and then um, once it meets the right conditions it will start fruiting or producing mushrooms so you can get these grow kits um, all over now you can even find them at home depot i recommend um, north spore they're a pretty good reliable company um, mushroom mountain sells grow kits also uh, nearby naturals is another good one so just do your research we sell some of these at the farmers market probably this spring i'm going to do um, garden giant kits um, but yeah we mostly just fruit them out for ourselves during you know market season so the next um the next step backwards towards production would be to buy um, grain spawn so you can get grain spawn in usually the same places that you would buy grow kits. Um, basically, you would be taking these grains, which are sterilized and colonized with mycelium, but they're very nutritious. So you would transfer these onto the less nutritious bulk substrate, um, which would be the, the media in the grow kits. And you can inoculate a lot of um, blocks with these we use five pound bags to inoculate about eight to ten um, grow blocks but you could stretch that even further if you wanted so if you wanted to kind of cut out the culture making process and just fruit mushrooms from um, grain spawn that saves on costs you're not paying for the large volume of grow blocks at that point so you can kind of have your own production, but you would be relying on a producer to make viable spawn for you. So if you drop, drop that back another step, um, in order to produce grain spawn, you need to um, have a mushroom culture. So there's a few different types of mushroom cultures. The, the most common, I guess, would be a Petri dish like this. So this is a shiitake mushroom, and we're trying out some new types of media, but basically it's on an agar jello type substance. And this is the mycelium, which is the same stuff that is colonizing the grain bags or the grow blocks, but it's in a sterile Petri dish. So you would take a wedge, like the piece that's cut out here, put it into your sterilized grains and wait for that to grow out. And then this is one option of starting your own mushroom culture library so the next step from that would be um, starting off with spores so if you want more of a genetic library kind of a custom strain that might even be dialed into your specific environment then you can start from spores so this is a Stropharia ruguso annulata or the garden giant and earlier um, this year and at the end of last year we did a project called 
the Immaculate Inoculation. So go back, check that out if you're interested in learning how to breed from mushroom spores. I like to do mine on petri dishes so that you can easily hydrate them and create a spore syringe. So this is a spore syringe and then this is a spore print. So in order to get this, we had to inoculate sterile water. Then we drew up that sterile water with the spores and you can see them floating around in there. So some of them come extremely concentrated so you'll be able to see a lot of spores. I recommend diluting them till about that concentration so that when you inoculate onto auger you will get a bunch of different colonies. So this is still pretty concentrated. I also have a process on how to isolate spores for breeding. It's a little bit more advanced but if you put a drop of this solution onto a, a petri dish and let those spores germinate they would mate with each other and form many little colonies on the petri dish so all of these are separate phenotypes and what i do then is i will select these grow them out onto a petri dish and then put them on a slant for long-term storage so this is probably the rarest form of mushroom products it's called a slant and you um, if you notice it has a deep well of nutrients so this will last for a very long time as long as it remains sterile as a screw-on cap to protect it um, so that's what I'm making behind me here I'm just did this extensive breeding project um, and I isolated all the colonies. Now I'm testing them out in fruiting and I will have the original culture to go onto what is called a generation one G1 um, slant for long-term storage. So probably the most rare form to buy your cultures, but definitely the most stable um, and the most sterile probably. But you can also keep plates and all the other forms sterile it's just a lot more difficult so then once you have your mycelium isolated out you can also produce what is called a liquid culture so this not to be confused with the spore syringe is a single um, isolated mushroom clone that will produce the same results over and over again so I sell these on my Etsy if you want to check out our Etsy fresh fungi, I'll post the link in the description. But this is the best way that I like to sell my products along with the slants because they've already been isolated um, and the strongest cultures are already selected for. So we will be having some G1 slants up for sale. I'm only going to do them in like small batches um, just because I want to be able to keep some for myself too but I'll post those on Etsy once we get our uh, breeding project completed and then I'm constantly restocking our inventory with liquid cultures and if you want to know how we do that process um, check out the video uh, about the importance of doing quality control for liquid cultures it kind of runs through our entire process there Okay guys, I hope that makes sense. Um, there are a lot of ways to start off growing mushrooms and it really just depends on how much um, control you want within that process and also the, uh, the, the equipment that you have available. If you're just going to fruit out a mushroom, you can do this right within this bag. But if you wanna produce a larger volume and you want to have more control over your production, um, I recommend starting with spore or um, if you want really high quality genetics already then I recommend getting slants or else um, plates or my favorite which is a li <coughs> excuse me a liquid culture and you can s expand these out really easily just by using um, a sterile broth this is just honey water 
So I would take this, um, inject it into one of these mycology lids. So these are available on our Etsy as well. It's just a, a plastic lid with a self-healing injection port. So you'd want to sterilize this um, to make sure that you're not introducing contaminants. And then this is a syringe filter. So you don't actually use this with the syringe, but the purpose of this is to displace the air when you're drawing up your liquid culture. So it filters the air that's going into the system and ensures that it is sterile. Um, I have a whole video on that. It's called um, utilizing the media extractor. So for my larger volume liquid cultures, I use a media extractor. It's much easier than trying to um, mess around with one of these injection ports. However, I do have these available and they're really nice in smaller batches. Um, so I hope that explains everyone's questions on the different products for starting um, mushroom cultivation. And if you have any more questions, feel free to email us or comment in the section below. Okay guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. And until next time, much love.